Chrysler's quest for the NES by Sunsoft, circa 1989, based on the 60s Adams Family teasers with John Astin and, of course, the late Jackie Coogan, Carolyn Jones, Lisa Loring, and Ken Weatherwax, made prior to, I shit you not, prior to the Paramount film duology with the late Raul Julia, the Warner Brothers and Saban produced reunion with Tim Curry and others, and the CGI animated MGM films, I might add. Anyways, the usual historical banter aside, let's kick some extraterrestrial ass. By now, I gather everyone's aware of its premise, seeing as it's based on the short-lived 60s TV series, predating all the other Adams-related media I brought up. Otherwise, for those not, it starts off with Uncle Fester relaxing one evening outside his mansion, Eventually, a UFO descends into town and unleashes its endless electric fury, and now the fate of the world rests within his unconventional yet capable hands. Oh, I almost forgot. In case he's watching this, James Rolfe, aka AVGN, this is for you. And yeah, it's been six years since he signed my copy of Too Many Games. Gameplay-wise, mirroring the likes of Blaster Master, another Sunsoft title, and SNK's Ikari Warriors, except with a long, grueling, adventurous twist. You're in control of the bizarre yet ballsy Fester, as he's stuck with Donkey Dick, but a horn-shaped blaster, with which he's capable of defending himself and all humanity against one endless horde of extraterrestrial lifeforms after another using B. Ditto for the whip that you'll acquire from Morticia later. And while we're on the subject of the controls, the D-pad lets Fester haul ass anywhere, horizontally, west or east, and or vertically, north and south. Start accesses the menu, where you can make use of the various items, keys for opening locked doors to buildings and houses, bulbs for illuminating the dark underground sewers, and cash for the hot dog stands. Of course, five bucks are needed to refill Fester's health. All of which you'll also acquire from offing every extraterrestrial foe on the field, and enabled using A. Two types of potions for refilling Fester's vitality and making him temporarily invisible, acquired upon visiting houses where a thing inhabits, not to mention Wednesday's vice grips for reversing Fester's state of paralysis upon being affected by the flies from the zombie heads or flames bat out by the red mutant frogs, the strongest I might add, and three sub weapons, missiles and TNT, deployed on the field by using A after acquiring them from Thing and Pugsley, respectively. And the news that you get from Hester from, aka Fester's sister, portrayed by the also late Wicked Witch herself, Margaret Hamilton, may God rest her, for instantly making every surrounding adversary your bitches at the drop of a goddamn hat with the help of Larch. <laughs> Before I forget, the also late Lisa Loring and Ken Weatherwax portray Wednesday and Pugsley, respectively. Enabling either the main blaster, aka the gun, and or Morticia's web, both of whose power levels can also be advanced upon acquiring the blue-lettered enhancement cards on the field, 8 for the blaster and 4 for the whip, akin to Konami's Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. And even referring to the clue diagram depending on which of the five alien guardians you've obliterated the shit out of in the maze-oriented buildings for which the keys are also needed. But whatever you do, avoid the red letter gun and whip cards as they'll decrease their respective power levels by one. Health-wise, Fester can only withstand two hits. In other words, it's game over should his ass be sent to an early goddamn grave. Pun barely intended. We are capable of finding a few extra vitality units in their respective secret locations. Considering the lineup of diverse adversaries, you've got your basic spores that just do fuck all but sit there motionless until they twitch and burst upon suffering damage, the constantly hopping multicolored mutant frogs, whose strength and offensive capabilities are defined only by their assorted hues, blue, brown, green, and red, with the latter two using their long-ass tongues and summoning three flames, disembodied zombie heads that summon mosquitoes and or slugs, 
blobs of green slime that multiply when you fire away at them, wall burrowing, red langoliers, agile big-eyed monsters that scurry away when provoked and or attacked, giant spiders, cycloptic ghosts, crawling spiked shells... I mean, seriously, did Logi2 just come by and leave his shit all over the place? and even three types of massive extraterrestrial sons of bitches seen exclusively on the UFO at the very end. A cycloptic crawler with only one green eye as its weakness, against which the whip is the most useful, a green clawed creature that throws rocks, and the floating brown creature with three pods around it. Regarding the bosses you'll face within five of the raided buildings, all with steep-ass learning curves, and barely any form of variety, so to speak, you're pitted against the Stretch Alien, whose arms strike at insane lengths, the two-whipped, triceratops-like alien, the towering, skeletable Knight Alien, whose weak point is shown on its gut when it strikes via the lightning from its sword, the massive, crest-headed, brown-shielded Gunner Alien, and the fire-breathing, cycloptic Apatosaur Alien. Upon obliterating each of those goddamn off-world ass-raping motherfuckers, they'll all offer you those aforementioned clues to the very same UFO from the intro. Yeah, that's right, that's what you fucking get! Eat whale shit, fucko! Enjoy your one-way ticket to hell, shit fucker! My only few hints regarding these confrontations? Keep a safe distance from the resilient bastards, be sure to have as much TNT and missiles to wear their asses down for the sake of alternating your offensive strategies, and above all, equip yourself with a fucking turbo controller, advantage or max preferred, if necessary. Give my regards to E.T., fuckstick! And phone that shit home while you're at it! Oh, and in addition, be prepared to farm your ass off in case you're low on bulbs, keys, cash, and blue-lettered gun and or whip enhancement cards in case you accidentally snatch any of the red-lettered types, which, yet again, I advised against doing. While the controls are fluid and adequate, albeit extremely straining, thanks to the rapid-fire button mashes and taps you're forced to execute, the gameplay is also tolerable to a fault, despite the pacing and combat aspects turning out to be one incessant-ass, frivolous-ass drag after another. Regarding Fester's quest, I wouldn't so much as expect a goddamn Sunday drive out of what we're looking at here, because there's a shitload of challenges afoot, the likes of which I'd take upon myself to expect instead if I were you, as you're forced to monitor Fester's health at all times, no matter what kind of situation he's hurled into. Even if you happen to pay continue after dying, your ass is sent all the way back to the motherfucking beginning! I mean, Jesus Triceratops teabagging Christ! Zelda 2 Syndrome, anyone?! <laughs> Shit! Amongst many other common drawbacks, the varying bullet types depending on the gun's level that'll coast around your target or fucking collide into dead ends, in which case you're better off aligning fester shots accurately. And even the chances of detecting, or in layman's terms, coming across the red letter gun and whip reverse enhancement cards, even when they appear in your desired path while constantly grinding your ass off. Not to mention having to deal with endless respawns of the same minor adversaries over and over, and suffering unnecessary damage from the Alien Guardians if your strategies aren't on point, with the obvious exception of the UFO's main computer at the very, very end of its long, drawn-out maze, which is anything but a major buzzkill, as long as you're in the right spots to effectively counter the opposing machinery, hence the overall impetus behind what I advised earlier, which I strongly, strongly suggest referring back to... At least the janky-ass 3D mazes are a walk in the park to navigate even without a map, literally and figuratively, as long as you stay away from the initial entrance. But besides that, to paraphrase Liar Liar, considering what a pedantic, pontificating, pretentious bastard, a belligerent old farce, and a worthless-ass steaming pile of cow dung this game's scope of difficulty can be, figuratively speaking, it never hurts to work your own way around that scope, and eventually demolish the shit out of it like an abandoned, unfulfilled structure after Hurricane Milton! Graphics-wise, for the time of its release, happy 35th anniversary for the record. Each and every element is recognizable at the very least, not just Fester himself, in-game and during the intro and outro cutscenes, and the countless waves of extraterrestrial lifeforms he constantly opposes at every turn, but also the rest of the Adamses in separate photos as they appear when you enter a house to snatch a necessary item, and even lurch himself when you use the noose to annihilate the pterodactyl-raping Antichrist out of said extraterrestrial lifeforms. Not to mention all gathered together, alongside Gomez, portrayed by the show's only surviving cast member, John Aston, for the record, although he's supposed to be this game's captive. 
but I digress. When you reach the Grey House near the end to acquire your fourth and final, aka your second secret extra health bar, The alternating top view scenes, while jarring and repetitive after a while, are at the very least unique, including the underground sewers, dark when Fester initially enters, and fully illuminated when he equips and uses up a bulb, the grotesquely gargantuan interiors of the UFO at the center of town, and even the primitive, albeit well-organized, 3D maze areas, no less. And the less I say about the five alien guardians, whose meticulous detail rivals those of Shadow of the Beast by the already defunct Cygnosis, aka Sony Liverpool, the better. In terms of music and sound, orchestrated by Naoki Kodaka, known for numerous other Sunsoft titles, the assortment of songs for each and every in-game scene don't disappoint either. Also, don't think I haven't noticed the use of the Delta Pulse Code modulated bass things and orchestral hits in all of the other tracks, except for the opening intro theme before the title, and even the ending theme after Fester once and for all destroys the UFO's main computer either, the likes of which would also be applied in Journey to Silius, Gremlins 2 The New Batch, Super Spy Hunter aka Battle Formula, Batman Return of the Joker, Gimmick, and Hebereke aka Euphoria the Saga. The usual techno babble aside, while the accompanying songs may become rather grating and repetitious after a while, a given one might add, they at least give off their intense, upbeat attributes in the most near indescribable ways. The sound effects are an entirely different matter, as they're the usual Sunsoft stock introduced in Blaster Master. But then again, you know something? Why beat around the motherfucking bush? Either way, take note of my top five songs displayed here. In regards to the replay value, at this juncture, there's next to Donkey Dick else to comment on whatsoever, as most of what I've been commenting on regarding Fester's quest should pretty much sum up each and every aspect-based apartment, especially the extremely high difficulty scope I deliberated on not too long ago, depending on your overall skill level, no less. If you're up to what this game will throw at you each chance it gets, while flawlessly attempting to master it in one run, best of luck and more power to ya! Otherwise, keep on hauling gas for better, more stable challenges, cause let me tell you, it's just flat out not worth your time and or finances. Or is it? Before I forget, there were numerous other Adams Family game titles, the majority of which were based on the earlier referenced Paramount duology of films with the late Julia, Houston, Lloyd, Ricci, Workman, Strykin, and even the magically disembodied hand of Christopher Hart, pre idle Hands, and others. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
plus the short-lived Hanna-Barbera animated series featuring the voice of the returning John Astin as Gomez. Case in point regarding the latter, Pugsley Scavenger Hunt, all released by the already defunct Ocean based in the UK, with even the Sega versions, Genesis, Game Gear, you name it, handled by the also defunct Flying Edge Care of Acclaim. Henceforth, what's my final verdict? As if it wasn't easy to see why this was overshadowed by the other Adams Family titles, considering I only remember trying out the NES adaptation of the aforementioned Paramount film, but I humbly digress. As I've just suggested earlier, if you're up to the many arduous, perplexing, and daunting struggles Fester's Quest will provide, by all means, give it a full speed whirl or two. Bottom line, be sure to have enough blood pressure meds supplied and prepared in case you happen to suffer a major shit attack from it. Until then, happy Halloween one and all. This is the one and only Hardcore Retro God, eerily signing off! <laughs>